Hey guys, I built a lot of antennas using transformers, balance and ununs. I get some pretty good questions, especially some from new hams that are just starting out, and I kind of want to address a couple of them. One of the questions I've gotten this more than once is, hey, how do I measure the feed point impedance of my antenna at the feed point before I hook everything up? How do I know that the wire is right and check feed point impedance at the antenna? Um, yeah, that's really, that can be done, and you can do that using a, uh, a, a an antenna analyzer or a, 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 a vector uh, network analyzer, a VNA or nano VNA or something like that. Um, but you're really missing out on what's the, the entire picture here, and that's really not how we do it. You can even calculate it um, if you knew the exact amount of... Um, of the velocity factor of the coax that you're using, uh, the perfect ground, uh, the antenna itself. There's so many things going on that you really don't want to go out and measure the uh, the feed point. Every antenna is different. And take this. Here's a, just a little aerial antenna. This feed point would be different if it, depending on the height, the ground it sat on. Every location, every antenna is different. It takes a little tweaking. So the, the answer to that question is you don't want to do that. We're not trying to match a transformer to the wire. We're trying to match the wire to the transformer, to a ballon or an unun. So I'm going to take you down that road and kind of show you, give you a quick, uh, just a real brief and, and simple way of, uh, of doing it. And, and some wires that are, are typical and, and, and historically work uh before you get out um, and um, try to put something together. So that, that's one question. Another question I got, and uh, and I apologize if I let anybody down the road, the way I use balance and ununs like they're, you know, like they're candy. But um, I, I put up recently a square loop uh, that had a feed point impedance uh, that we would estimate uh, or by modeling or what have you at 200 ohms. So I used a four to one uh, ballon on this thing and I, I built this thing and uh, somebody commented and I'm not picking on you, please. I'm just trying to uh, make a point here um, and I'm trying to help you. Uh, someone looked at it and said, wow, I'm going to build that antenna and see how it works with my new nine to one on on. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> and I'm going to show you why for that as well. Anyway, let's go over feed point impedance, wire lengths for antennas and some some typical general Previously modeled lengths for wires that work with certain ununs and balance. Stick around. Let's start off by saying what we really want to do is find the SWR or VSWR or Standing wave ratio or voltage standing wave ratio, bottom line, SWR. Uh, you hear it all the time in antennas because that's really what we're looking for, for the match of the coax and the antenna together. I mean, the desired SWR is perfect one-to-one -one ratio. We don't always get this. And um, a lot of people will say, you'll, you'll hear someone saying, I don't use balance and ununs. I don't need that. I always use a resident antenna. That's great. Kind of one of the purposes. Uh, purposes of the uh, ballon or run-on is for a multi-band antenna and uh, and when people talk about you know loss or, or, or that type of thing um, it's it's kind of like look if you really look at it here's a here's a really good chart uh, from fire stick antennas I'll put a link below it uh, below to the to this chart but it kind of shows uh, effective radiated power and really how much you're losing the chart is just power loss at various SWRs and then let's just say I, I try to, and, and most all people, if you're, we'll say if you're under two to one, you're you're you're, you're doing okay, and you can you can transmit without causing any harm to uh, to your radio transceiver or what have you. But even at two to one, a, a two to one SWR means that you're if you're 100 watts, you're putting out 88.9 watts because you're getting 88.9 percent uh, base of effective radiated power. Now this is just somewhat a calculation and an estimate. There's so many other factors that are going on, going on around you as well. Like I said earlier, uh, with the little antenna, the ground, the height, 
um, the uh, the loss in the in the coax, a lot's going on. But just we're just going to be general here, get a general idea idea that um, your your effective radiated power at, at two to one is eighty eight point nine. Me, I'm using twenty watts, so if I'm getting even at two to one. Um, that's 18 watts. I'm still putting out 18 watts. If you if you learn a little bit about decibels in your signal, you're never ever going to tell the difference between 18 and 20 watts, and I don't think you'll ever tell the difference between 88.9 and 100 watts as well. So um, yeah, it's cool if you you only use resonant antennas. That's great. I like to experiment with all antennas, both resonant and um, non-resonant antennas. Let's start out. I want to start out with an antenna and, and kind of give you a little idea. Of ratios and which un to use and, and how to you know what what situations call for what un -un. we'll start with a simple quarter wave vertical antenna now a quarter wave vertical th there's formulas to find a quarter wave I, I, here it is right here I'll also show you there's an app I use antenna tool app that's on uh, most platforms that's the easy way you just plug in the frequency that you're going for and you can find a quarter wave for that frequency so a quarter wave in general has a perfect antenna feed point of 50 ohms. So as you see here on the diagram with 50 ohms, you're, um, you're matching a coax feed point of 50 ohms. That's one to one. That's a one to one match at 50 to 50. So typically what you would use, you wouldn't even need a ballon there, but, but you could use a one to one ballon. Um, what a one to one ballon will do and help you greatly is, is keep the radiated energy in the in the uh, driven element and kind of work as a choke somewhat but that's what you would use a one-to-one -one ballon for for a one-to-one -one, 50 ohms on the on the antenna 50 ohms on the coax yeah it's all it's going to be a little different here or there but um in that neighborhood and that's the, like i said before this is just general what we're doing so let's take a look at another antenna another antenna is the half wave antenna Half wave antennas are, are, are people will say in fed half wave or, or I also make a vertical half wave antenna. Um, I for 40 meters in fed half wave is kind of the most common one. Um, here you go. Generally, the feed point for this antenna um, is measured in ohms. Uh, the impedance is about 2450, 2450 ohms is the impedance. Uh, they're measured in ohms and then your coax is 50. Wow. So if you divide 20, 2450 by 50, you get 49. Well, that means you would use a 49 to one on un very common for in fed half waves. And, uh, this is one I have as a 10 tennis. Um, great. I like this one. There's so many of them out there, but, um, I also use this one. I make a, a, a vertical in fed half wave for 20 meters. So it, it's, it's a, it's a great, um, on, on, I mean, on, that is an un -un for an unbalanced antenna, but um, but that's the theory of that. So if you're going to build a half wave, measure your antenna for a half wave, half wavelength, um, 49 to one because the 2450 divided by 50, the coax, uh, comes to 49, and 49 to one is the ratio there, and what you're what you're aiming for and what you're trying to do. Um, let's get back over to balanced antennas at a, a dipole, a simple dipole. If you feed a dipole, which is a half wavelength long, if you feed it in the middle, you have a quarter wavelength of a wire on each side. That means at that point, the feed point is still 50 ohms. That's a per perfectly balanced half wavelength at the feed point would be 50 ohms. With the coax coming in at 50 ohms as well, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a perfect, you got a one-to-one -one ratio. Once again, a one-to-one -one balance for a, for a simple dipole, Perfect. You got a one-to-one -one ratio, one-to-one -one ballon, and that's how we roll. Okay, so another balanced antenna as we're sta standing on dipoles is an off-center fed dipole. Now, typically with an off-center fed dipole, you the feed point just shifts. And what th this does is makes this, this antenna a multi-band antenna because it becomes resonant on, on other bands other than just, let's say, a uh, uh, the 40-meter band, if that's what you're making it for. Um, if you look at this antenna, it is also... And it's when you shift that feed point, it changes the feed point impedance and it becomes 200 ohms. So 200 ohms, um, you, your coax coming in at 50, that's 200 to about about 50. That's a four to one ratio. That's when you use a four to one ballon. There you go. You have a four to one ratio, four to one ballon, 
perfect for a off-center fed dipole, and um, and and that's the situation for that antenna. Let's go down to some. We'll call them random wires, uh, but I like to call random wires. That is just a name. Uh, I know I get this comment all the time. Well, if you know the length, it's not a random wire. <laughs> it's just a name, man. It's just a name. You don't need to explain to me what the word random means. And that, don't do that. That's not a good look on you at all. Um, some random wire lengths. I'll, I'll put a link. There's a really good website that explains what random wires are in, in a nutshell. Basically, it's... You're trying to find a length that is not resonant on a frequency or its multiples because then you can use it to make a multi-band antenna out of with the help of a un un and naturally a tuner because these things aren't perfect. Let's start with the first ones, the smaller ones. Um, a couple links you've probably seen me talk about the 17.5 and for that matter also the Rivikoff which is 25 feet. These are 5.33 meters or 7.6 meters and length. Um, the feed point on those is somewhere between 200 to 350 ohms. So if you take, we'll take the 200 again and uh, and divide it by the 50 ohms of the coax. Then it, with that, with a, you get a close enough match and with a, a tuner, or for me, in the antenna tuner, then what you're going to use is a 4 to 1 un, -un. This is an unbalanced antenna. We want an un, -un not the balance for, for this antenna. Uh, you do need a ground plane under this for the diagram I just showed. We're just talking about the driven elements. Uh, grounds are another, a whole other story, and uh, I do have a video on, on RF ground out there as well. So this is a shorter, the shorter random wire lengths and, and with a 4 to 1. As the wires get longer, the, uh, the also the uh, feed point impedance gets a little bit longer too. That's where we get into the true random wire antenna as I talked about earlier. Um, some of the uh, lengths on these are 29 feet or uh, 8.84 meters. I built that. I built the 35 and a half feet or the 10.82 meters and the 41 foot um, antenna, which is a uh, 12.5 meters. This is truly what we call the random wire antenna. Um, with these, the, the antenna feed point is somewhere around 450 to 500 ohms. So um, with that feed point, it's somewhat, if you, let's just take 450 divided by 50, the 50 ohms of the coax. The ratio there is nine to one. And you're definitely going to need a tuner because you're not going to get a perfect match there because it's kind of a, a rough ballpark there between 450, 500 in that neighborhood. But so with a tuner and uh, and that setup, a nine to one, nine to one unun. This is probably the most popular unun there is a nine to one for random wire antennas. Now there's other things you can do for a match. Um, you can, uh, matter of fact, I've got one here. You could. A lot of people, and back in the old days, it's kind of one of the things they did. They would use a uh, an antenna coupler and match it. As you see on the back of this one, it says uh, uh, long wire out. You could put the this right at the feed point and use it. This is a very efficient way to make a, uh, and then you can make a truly random wire antenna here because you could tune it no matter what, no matter what the wire length is. But um, yeah, a, a, an antenna coupler, antenna tuner, I've got an older one around here. Someone here it is right here. Let's grab it. Um, yeah, some, this is an old MFJ tuner. Uh, same thing. You can see on the back, you, you could uh, put the wire, the wire of the ground on these. These are really what's a true random wire antenna. You random, randomly put any length you want up there, but kind of sticking back to uh, to balance and ununs on this for sure. Um, getting back to the question um, when when uh, we were talking about, hey, uh, I, when I built the loop and the guy goes, I, I want to try it, my nine to one unun with it. Um, let's take a look at the loop. The loop is another um, balanced antenna, so it's going to require balance. And depending on where the feed point is, some people feed these in a corner and get a 50 ohm match. But generally, um, just just a, a basic loop here, um, fed somewhere on the sides is around 200 ohms. So once again, 200 divided by 50 for the uh, the coax comes to four to one ratio at the feed point. And once again, that's where we go to the four to one ballon versus the four to one unun so they're, they're different um and balance and and unun construction i don't want to go down that rabbit hole there research that it's something it's good to learn um my friend uh smoking ape he's got some great videos on that i i think he has a really good video 
On feed point impedance as well, I'll put a link to his video as well in this. Uh, kind of want to go down a rabbit hole with a little bit more, a um, little bit more research. You can do that as well. But so that that's that. Let's talk about let's talk about SWR and and antenna lengths. Um, so if you're building an antenna that you want to be a truly resonant antenna, like let's just say the first couple uh, examples I showed you there, the quarter wave vertical or a or an infed half wave and you're trying to make it resonant or perfectly resonant resonant as you as you can and you're you're trimming or extending the wire a lot of people uh will fold over the wire and uh, on a um on an insulator i wish i had one here to show you and then you could twist it uh the point's going to be where it folds and bends is the end point of the antenna so then if it's too short you can untwist it stretch it out twist it back and at the end tape it up that's how you do it or with verticals you just trim it trim it down like i know with a telescopic whip i can do this with it until i get the right point or a wire you could just cut it so when you're building a wire antenna always cut the first the first cut of the wire make it a little long if you're going to trim it for um for to make it resonant now on some of these others like the random wires just cut it the length and then you're going to let the uh the the, the un -un and the uh the turn the tuner do the, do the work for you but for getting back getting a little off topic here getting back to the uh cutting and trimming um when you're checking swr on this couple things when you run whether you have a, a an antenna analyzer your your rig your your radio itself has an swr and i know my my zygus have that as but when you're checking let's just say if you you're checking swr and you're using swr to trim or extend an antenna for let's just use 7.2 megahertz in the 40 meter band if your first sweep as you can see it, it, it there on the left uh, how i have you're trying to get 7.2 megahertz and the sweep itself is coming up closer to the other side to to a lower near closer to 7.1 megahertz you need to trim that antenna that antenna is too long in the same respect if you look over on the right side if your sweep comes down and it's higher closer to 7.3 megahertz it's higher than the 7.2 megahertz the antenna is too short and you need to trim it down so that's kind of real quick in a nutshell. I know a lot of people get frustrated when they're trying to tune an antenna using uh, an SWR meter or, or what have you, but um, that's a quick one. You can always always know um, from that sweep whether to lengthen or shorten it as well. This was kind of basic and very general. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of uh, drive-by experts that are going to add more comments down in the bottom and tell me everything I'm wrong about this, but I'm telling you, this is from my experience, especially with balance and unknowns, which I use so much. Um, if you don't like them, don't use them. If you want to make a resident antenna and, and, and be perfect, go be perfect. Um, I just know that when it comes to loss, signal loss and what have you, I've been making some pretty amazing uh, DX contacts with um, with my compromise per se antenna. Every antenna is a compromise and you hear that as well. No antenna is perfect. But that should help you out a little bit as far as which un, -un to use. Feed point impedance on, on, a, on a wire, you don't need to know it as much as you need to know the entire system together and where your SWR is at. That's really what I wanted to get at. I hope this helped if you're a, a new ham and you're just starting to build antennas. Um, if, you have, if you're an older ham and, and, and have some, something that will really add to this um, without being, a, you know, without being a sad ham, <laughs> add it in the comments below. Anyway, uh, I build a lot of antennas. If you're new to the channel, go check them out. I, I mean, a lot. I live by the sea and, and do a lot by uh, by the ocean side. I, I work over in Poland uh, for a while. I work in, worked in Europe. Built a lot of uh, horizontal type antennas while I was there, and, uh, and and got a lot of experiment with experimenting done with um, with trying to uh, make antennas work. So if you're into that, please like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Walt K4 OGO 73, my friends.